emeritus scholar at the American Enterprise Institute and contributing editor for The Atlantic, Norm Ornstein. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and he has written extensively about mental illness and how to fix a broken mental health system. We're, we're, we're uh, Senator, we're going to get to you in a minute. Norm's got to catch a flight, but this fits in uh, with, with the gun discussion, too. And I know you have so much to say on that, but Norm, let me start with you. We've, we've had the discussion before about you losing your son after a 10-year battle with mental health issues. I, I talk to so many parents that are going through the same thing. And, you know, all of us parents say there, but by the grace of God, go I. Because the level of, of, of depression, anxiety, oh loneliness, suicidal ideations, even suicides, it's just exploding among our youngest Americans. Let's talk about that first, and then I want you to talk about the Miami program. Sure. It, you know, we're going to see things get a whole lot worse. COVID, the lockdowns for kids are going to create even bigger problems. We know that uh, we'll also see more serious mental illness emerging, and we have a broken system. There isn't a family in America that hasn't been touched by this, and some more deeply, like my family. Uh, others, just imagine what it's like if you are a person of color and you've got to worry not just about your kids being shot uh, on the street, but what happens if you have a mental illness, you call for help and that help may end up resulting in tragedy. We have to make some changes, Joe and Mika, from top to bottom. We have to change a model where we basically put people with serious mental illness in prison instead of getting them help. Or for people like my son who had a phenomenon called anosognosia, part of his brain disease where he didn't uh, have any insight into his illness, they go untreated. And so many of the problems that we have, including the violence, is untreated mental illness and and, and it, it's it's maddening to me when you have people that are taking the most extreme positions on guns talking about oh well this is about mental illness this is about mental health care but they won't fund it you you talk about people of color uh, who have problem getting the help they need you can say the same thing it's heartbreaking in, in rural america they just so much of rural america also they don't have access to the mental health systems that they need access to and there are just parents all across america just begging begging for help you know i could go on a rant about guns but of course mental illness is a problem globally every other country has similar levels to what we have they don't have the gun violence. So it's not about mental illness. And of course, more people with serious mental illness are victims of violence than they are perpetrators. But we have a system where we don't have beds. We don't have trained personnel. If uh, a police officer who's been trained tries to take somebody in crisis to find a place to get treatment, you can go to an emergency room where you'll maybe sit there languishing for hours, or you go to jail. And well, that's not, not, not the just right way to hours, go. days. You talk about teenagers. We we uh, we have a lot of friends in, in, in the mental health uh, services, and there are kids that are suicidal. They'll call to get them uh, inpatient help. They say we have nothing for a week. Mm -hmm. They will go sit in an emergency room, uh, you know, get in a room, and and maybe they're. For days. It's, it is a nightmare. And, you know, one of the uh, sad things about it is we're throwing a lot of money in the wrong places. You know, uh, we can get to Miami in a little bit, but I will just say that in Miami, there are 2,400 people with significant mental illness who are in prisons. It's costing the county, uh, Miami-Dade County, $232 million a year, almost $100,000 a person. If you actually provided treatment for these people, it would cost a tiny fraction of that. We can save lives and save money, and that's what this remarkable judge, Steve Leifman, in Miami-Dade County, Florida, has done. We have a model and it's a model that's a public health model moving in that direction instead of a criminal justice so model. Tell us about the model, but I'll add in another factor that uh, we all know uh, co contributes to this problem is that when you're dealing with mental health, because, you know, one of the reasons why people get put in prison is because they've also, in the process of having um, a, a, an episode or whatever it is, they've committed a crime or they've, um, the people don't know what to do with them. They get thrown in prison. Okay, fine. But when you're dealing with 
mental health, often you're dealing with pharmaceuticals and trying to treat yeah. the mental illness. And it can take months to see if a certain medication can help someone get back to stability. We're still, you know, uh, we're out of the dark ages when it comes to treatments. Yes. But we have medications that can work. But you're absolutely right, Mika. If you have somebody who's willing to get treatment, mm -hmm. you need to take some time to find the right mix of medications. That's when people are in jail, often, even if they've been on medications, they deny them. They put them in solitary confinement, which is the worst thing you can do. Right. And of course, so in, our, in our jails, we have poorly trained, poorly right. paid uh, uh, guards who right. don't know what they're doing and often react with violence. It's the worst thing you can do yeah. to people. And the inhumanity of it, you know, watching what happened with this poor person in the subway car, Jordan Neely in New York, chokehold and murdered, basically. And it's like nothing. Uh, we don't treat people as people. And that's something that uh, they're doing in Miami. It's something that we're trying to spread around the country. It's working through the criminal justice system, but it's not that everybody gets involved. My son was not deeply involved with that. But I've taken on this task because I don't want other families to have to go through what we went through, and so many do. And if you can find ways to save lives and save money, and you can do it by training police the right way, and now we need to train a whole lot of others, including in schools, when kids act out, they shouldn't be thrown to the ground by some security person or put in handcuffs. We have to find better ways to do this, and those ways exist. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we did a documentary, which you, we talked about when I was on, uh, a while back yep. called The Definition of Insanity, which lays out what the program is. Right. And just one other element I'll mention, what they're doing in Miami is they're putting up, and it'll open this fall, a one-stop shop, a facility where you can take in people at every different level of crisis. Take the homeless off the streets. They have a podiatry clinic, a dental clinic, uh, an eye clinic, and actually give them a place to stay where they can get stabilized, train them, and put them out there, and they can become productive citizens. They're people just like everybody else who need help. Right. And, you know, the pain that we went through as a family was nothing compared to the pain that my son went through because he had a brain disease that he did not cause. Right. All right, Norm, thank, thank you so you, much Norm for being Norm with us uh, this month, obviously. Uh, uh, mental uh, health uh, awareness. Mental month. health awareness month, but, but a month that uh, so many people are focusing on this. We need to do it throughout the year. Thank you for being a big part thank of that. Thank you.